I've got a notification on my phone. My phone's going absolutely bonkers. Basically saying we have an intruder in the yard, right? Logged onto the CCTV, looked at the cameras, and there's people in my yard. Right, before we get on with this video, I want you to comment below and guess what you think the mileage is on this Passat in front of me. Here we go then, Volkswagen Passat. Um, it is, I'm gonna to have to blur out the bloody number plate, aren't I? It's a 53 plate, but I can't show you the reg because I don't want you lot cheating. Come back around here. 1.9 TDI, it's a high line, right? Look, body works all nice. All nice and mint, look how fresh this car is. Bit of wear there on the handle there, yeah? Give away sign for maybe a bit of mileage, but then you look at this, the bolster on the seat. It's a high line, like I say, so it's got full leather. It's very tidy in there. Wear on the steering wheel. Does anything look abnormal there for, to you? A little bit of wear there on the gear stick. So this car has just come in, but all I want you to do at this point of the video is guess in the comments below what you think the mileage is on that car, all right? Hopefully that camera don't wobble around too much. Looks like it's all right. So this is another episode of, I haven't even decided what I'm gonna name this series. I think the Binker Diary in this week is week number two. We done one last Sunday and I asked for everyone's feedback on it and the comments were absolutely unreal. It was nothing but positive, nothing but supportive. And it's clear that everyone wanted to see more of this style of video. So I am on my way to work at the minute uh, in my Mrs's uh, Porsche McCann Turbo, which she's decided she wants to sell. Uh, I can't sell it yet though because it's got to go off the Porsche to get some bits done and it's actually booked in this week to get them bits done. I'm going to take it there. Uh, yeah, I'll probably do that in a separate video actually and I've requested a courtesy car from Porsche. I've got no idea what it's going to be uh, but make sure you're subscribed for that video. I'll probably uh, do it in the one after this, all right? Uh, but this car, I absolutely rate this car. Yeah, loads of power, loads of noise, uh, pure quality and class. It's a bloody Porsche. It's, it's, expect I suppose. I asked her why she wants to sell this car. Uh, she actually wants a Range Rover. Like this is better than a Range Rover in my opinion. I'm like why do you want a Range Rover? She said I want the big black one. So I'm like so you want to sell your little white one and get a big big black one. Is that right? She said yeah. Yeah. I thought she was talking about something else but yeah fair enough. So yeah I'm currently on my way to work. Uh, this is like I say another episode of the Binker Diary. Uh, I've had a week of headaches. The last seven days has been nothing but bloody headaches at work. And a lot of them headaches I'm gonna talk about in this video. And we're also gonna do a car of the week because I've got a car of the week in my mind and I absolutely rate these cars. So we'll talk about that later on in the video. But one problem in particular we had this week is absolutely hilarious. And I'm gonna tell you about that as well at some point during this video, all right? So don't go anywhere. I'll get on with the intro. We'll arrive at Bing Car and we'll begin talking about my last seven days at work. Right, so we are here in my office. Um, my office is sort of situated out the back, kind of hidden away from the world. I don't generally deal with the customers here at Binka. I do kind of get involved with the buying. Every now and then I'll get involved with the selling. Uh, in, in all honesty, I'll get involved with absolutely anything. I love getting hands on stuff, but I'm generally quite busy doing my own stuff. My role um, within the business is, I'm actually our accountant, so I sit in here, I do all of our accounts, I'm bloody anal with all the bookkeeping, uh, doing all the taxes and all that sort of stuff, which is why I built I say I built, I had this system built uh, for the car trade because it just makes the whole job so much easier. Obviously my other job, job role within the business is social media. As you lot know, I'm on bloody YouTube, Instagram, and doing all this sort of stuff all the bloody world, so that also takes a lot of work. I've got a computer here, I do all of my own editing, and I talk about it a lot. I carry my camera bag with me everywhere I go, and within that bag, I've always got my, my cameras all fully charged, and all of my SD cards fully formatted so I can film a video at any point at any time. So um, 
To the right of me, I've got the reception area, um, and that's the trade section of the business. So a lot of our, we sell a lot of cars to car traders. We supply a lot to the car trade because our business, the car buying shop, is a big supply of cars for the car trade. So that's the trade section just there. And my dad is actually our manager for the trade section. So me and my brother Leon are the two directors. We've got my dad, who's the manager. Harry, a lot of you that have visited here before would have dealt with him on the reception. And then in front of me here is Binker Retail. My brother Jerome is the manager for, for Binker Retail and he does all of our finance and all of our retail stuff. So uh, the other director is my brother Leon. So director one is me, director number two is Leon. And Leon does a lot of our buying. He's a big buyer in our business and he runs our shop, uh, which is the car buying shop at Poplar's Garden Centre, which has been closed for a lot of the last 12 months because of lockdown and stuff, but we're actually reopening that this week as well so that's exciting good start to the week i've just come in and i'm on this online auction here and i just bought a load of car parts so there's uh, some range rover parts bit, bit random uh, but we do try to buy a few car parts you never know firstly when you might need them and secondly if you can earn a bit of a profit out of them uh, there's no harm in buying them so yeah 1574 quid is the winning bid and i'll probably jump in the van the next few days and go pick them up so i'll probably show you them in next week's episode of Binka Diaries, all right? So what else can we talk about? So the last seven days has been absolutely manic. We've bought loads of cars, we've sold loads of cars, and we have also had our fair share of problems. It's used cars, yeah? If you can't deal with problems, this ain't the trade to be in. Uh, you get kind of get used to the fact that cars go wrong, they give you headaches, and you know what? They always get sorted. It's never, ever a big issue, so it's never, ever a problem. Problem number one this week was basically a few weeks ago, we sold a Mini, right? Uh, we sold it for 1,600 quid, proper nice little car and the, this week the engine management light come on right so the customers rang up says you're not happy the engine management lights come on i was like just chill out there's probably nothing she's like no it's an engine light proper like big problem in her mind which fair enough you know it happens i get that people don't understand cars it's not a problem we was like just give it to your mechanic let him look at it let us know what it is he's plugged into it and discovered it's got a vanos issue right he's gone back to her and said it needs a timing chain huh no idea how he concluded concluded time and chain uh, for a Vanos issue and he quoted her a thousand pounds. She paid 1,600 quid for the car. She's now got a 1,000 pound bill. She is absolutely screwing as you can imagine. So she's rang us up, going ballistic, understandably. And we're like, listen, don't stress, get a car back to us, we'll give you a full refund. So we got it back, gave her a full refund, got it into our mechanic. He looked at it um, and within an hour, the car was back at Bing Car with no issue. Basically, Mini suffer with, uh, they get like oil built up in the Vanos area. Just got to give it a little clean. I'll show you a little video now. And we have here the second one. Yeah, so we give it a little clean out, change the oil, jobs are good and engine management light's gone. There is no rattle from the timing chain. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the timing chain. And ironically, one of the cars that we sold this week was that Mini. We put the price up to 2,000 pounds and it sold straight away. And uh, yeah, so we kind of made a profit on a problem. But that was headache number one. Headache number two is the funny story that I was talking about earlier in the video, right? So I was at home yesterday, yesterday being a Sunday, and we closed at half three on a Sunday, right? So my dad was here, he's locked up, set the alarm, we've now got all these lasers and stuff in the, in, in the yard outside, so if anyone steps in the yard, alarm goes off and it alerts security and stuff, right? Literally within minutes of my dad setting the alarm, I've got a notification on my phone, my phone's going absolutely bonkers, basically saying we have an intruder in the yard, right? You can imagine that, I'm thinking, shit, what's, what's going on? So, I've logged onto the CCTV, looked at the cameras, and there's people in my yard. I'm thinking, how the bloody hell are these people in my yard? So, I've zoomed in on them, and I'm thinking, what are they doing? Right, so I'm, at this point, I'm, you can imagine, I'm panicking, I'm thinking, there's people in my bloody yard, Security now on their way with the dogs, yeah, we've got the security dogs now. And um, I'm thinking, right, we need to get these bloody idiots out of my yard. So I try to ring my dad, he's not answering his phone. I've rang him again, I've properly harassed his phone, ringing after ringing after, I don't do that to anyone, it winds me up if anyone ever does that to me. But on this occasion, I needed to harass him, yeah? I kept calling him, calling him, and I'm like, what's, what's bloody going on? These people, like, I talked recently about security issues that we had in the yards, I'm concerned, yeah? So I'm looking at the cameras, right? And I'm thinking, these people don't look like they're up to no good. They, if anything, they look a bit worried. 
Yeah, basically these people were our customers. <laughs> and my dad's not noticed that we've got a couple of people in the yard looking at cars. He's locked up, he's gone home and hey presto, we've got some customers locked in the yard. They're wandering around, set the alarms up, off, set the alarms off even, security now on their way. And I'm, I'm concerned that I've got a thief in my yard, right? I managed to get hold of my dad and my like, dad, you need to get back to the yard. You've locked some bloody customers in the yard. Then my phone then rang. The, the customers that were locked in the yard had called the security company because bear in mind I couldn't have any contact with the customers because uh, they're in the yard and I'm at home looking at the cameras. Um, they've contacted the security, got my phone number, called me and said, hi, we're stuck in your yard. And I'm like, I know you're stuck in my yard. I can see you, I'm so sorry. We've got someone coming back there now. And within minutes, my dad arrived let them out of the yard and um, yeah they were a little bit frustrated but they did laugh it off to be fair to them so that was headache number two but that was quite a funny one i've got headache number three we're going to save that for the end of the video but for this section of the video i'm going to now go for a little wander around in the yard show you some cars that we bought and then talk about a few that we sold right weather's good isn't it uh so much nicer so yeah we've bought bloody loads of cars this week it's been uh it's been a mad week of buying uh we've sold loads as well which is nice so uh bought bought where do we start Sirocco. there's a Sirocco here somewhere i reckon it's that one there probably i'm not adamant but i reckon it probably is uh loads of vans we've had loads of vans coming this week we've got a van over in the back corner there you probably see that it's a high top transit all the way, all the way, there we go, in focus. Uh, we've got that lineup of vans there, one of them's now getting cleaned just over there. What else have we bought? A couple of customers walking in, look, a couple of punters. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Come to spend some dosh on some binker stock. Um, Grey 318D, that's gone off to get the wheels refurbed, but Ollie from RRT just popped down and yeah, the wheel is not looking good. Ollie, you got good news or bad news for me, mate? It's always bad. What's that? That's all you ever do, it's just what bad you, news. What have you done to my wheel, mate? <laughs> what, so that's a BMW wheel, yeah? Yeah, both what, of them. What, they're both our wheels? Yeah. And they're both cracked, yes, yeah? Both yeah, Thanks for the good news, yeah. mate. <laughs> all right, mate. You coming to put a battery on a car? Which car is it? Oh, right, have you bought the car then, have you? Okay. I'm guessing they're going to get the key, have they, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. He's decided he wants to put a battery on a car that he just bought, a Nissan X-Trail. Oh, that's the X-Trail, I think I mentioned that in the last video, so that's apparently sold as well now. Goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. KP10 Insignia, four courses. We buy a lot of courses. They're generally parked at the top there, because uh, we sell a lot of courses. Uh, what else? Toyota Hilux, I might go out for a little drive in that in a sec, that's a proper nice thing. A BN57 Polo, I don't know where that is, must be here somewhere. Uh, BMW 4 Series, which you probably would have seen in the previous video, there it is, part there, it's a nice thing that is. Um, get, get your camera angles right, Cal. There we go, lovely car, lovely jubbly. Uh, KR60 Citroen DS3, it's got with that, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. What are the chances of that of all the cars I could have been stood next to? It was the DS3. We've also bought a Nissan Leaf, which is located just over there. Zoom in, Cal. Yeah, not too exciting. And then going back to sales, we had a Canto come in this week and that sold straight away. We had a Jaguar XF Luxury, that was a proper nice car. That sold straight away as well. And uh, a Kia Sportage or Sportage. Water, I don't know, even know how you say it, but that went as well. So, what should we do now? Car of the week? Should we do the car of the week? Yeah, I'm going to show you the car of the week. It's either the Toyota Hilux, which is parked just over there, it's a proper nice bit of stock, uh, or the VW Passat. Like them 1.9 diesel, 1.9 litre diesel engines are bloody brilliant. Um, which one of the two? Which one do you think should be the car of the week? Which one deserves that crown? You lot should have guessed the mileage at this point of the Passat. What do you think the mileage is of that car? That's a big feature on that car. So what we'll do now is we'll just cut some cinematics and in them cinematics you'll be faced with my favourite car that we've had come in at Binker over the previous week. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, 
Come on, guys. Didn't think I was going to pick the high locks, did ya? Obviously, I picked the Passat High Line. And for those that don't know what High Line is, it basically consists of heated seats, full leather. I think that's pretty much it. It's a lovely car, but right now, you probably want to know what the mileage is, don't ya? I would have guessed, had I looked up the wear on there, I think I would have guessed on the wear on the gear knob there, probably about 120,000 miles. That would have been my guess. The mileage this car has done is 170,000 miles, which you'd think would be quite bad, but in one of these cars with this 1.9 TVI VW engine, uh, let's turn that down because that's very annoying, that ain't bad mileage at all. So what we're going to do now is, I have got my draggy box here, out of the right way so you can read it. So everyone's like, Cal, how do you do draggy times? Uh, what app do you use? What's the name of the box? It's called a draggy box. This is not sponsored. They're very good. They're about 100 quid. Connect the app to your phone and it tells you how fast you can do 0 to 60 and 0 to 100 and 100 to 200, whatever, all that sort of stuff. My thing is 20 to 70 mile an hour and currently the slowest car on my draggy leaderboard is the BMW 420i, 2 litre petrol turbo engine. Uh, it's a big heavy car of a little engine. That done it in 9.01 seconds and I think there's a chance that Passat might just beat it so let's get out on the road and see how it gets on. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, wheel spin. Straight second. Nice change, Cal. Third. It's doing it all right. It's moving. It's moving. Fourth. Keep going. Keep going. There it is. Yeah, this, this ain't going to beat the four series, I don't think. Let's see what time we've done. Right, so the results are in, guys. Uh, I've already got a cyclist in front of me. Let's just get past him. What's your thoughts on cyclists on the road, by the way? I actually used to ride a bike, but I stopped doing it because I kind of felt a bit sort of selfish. He's just stopped. Um, let me pass, thank you, mate. I don't have any anger towards cyclists, by the way. I'm not that fussed about it, but I know there's a lot of frustration on the roads towards cyclists, but that's a different subject altogether. Let me know your thoughts now in the comments below. I don't ride a bike anymore because I used to think, God, I'm holding all these cars up and I feel a bit rude. So I just, yeah, I didn't bother. But, um, the results, the results. So uh, on the plus side, if you are a BMW 420i owner and you race a VW Passat, you will beat it, all right? So rest assured, you have a faster car than I currently have right now, all right? So basically that now officially means that this is the slowest car on the drag leaderboard. The time that it's done 20 to 70 mile an hour in is, drum roll, 14.37 seconds. Oh. It was loads slower than the 4 Series. So, yeah, it's, it's nowhere near as quick as I thought it was going to be, but uh, this is another cyclist there. My name is the cyclist. He's happy to see me. Uh, <laughs> what this car offers is it's super reliable and it's bloody cheap to run. So, they're a great car. This engine, combined with any car, whether it's a Volkswagen, an Audi, a Skoda, whatever, they are such bloody good engines. I rate them highly and up to a sort of a couple of grand, uh, they're a very, very good car. So this one in particular, obviously 170,000 miles, the fact that it's got leather heated seats and it's just so tidy in here, like even the shine on that, that part of the dash there just all looks very nice. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it as this. Uh, it's probably been quite a long video. We had done a lot in today's video, but let me know if you wanna see more of this style of video. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna keep this ball rolling because it's dead easy for me. I could probably film one every Monday and get it up the following Sunday. Uh, and you know what, we've always got stuff going on at Binker, so why not? Thank you very much for watching. Uh, what else was I gonna say? There's one more thing I wanna say. I did have another problem this week. So I was laying in bed last night and you know the M3 convertible that we sold last week. If you didn't see last week's video, by the way, uh, go and check that out in the top corner. One of the corners. Uh, yeah, that M3, uh, before we sold it, we put a new gearbox in it, right? Cause it had a little rattle on the gearbox. So we thought, well, this needs a new gearbox. Got one fitted at a local BMW specialist, and um, we sold it to our customer, who was actually one of our friends, and he sent me this video last night. Doesn't select again. <laughs> it, that, that's the car trade, guys. Hashtag the car trade. It happens. Used cars are a pain in the ass, but like I keep saying, no problem is ever a big problem in it. They always get sorted, all right? So I don't know where we would end up with that. We might have to put another gearbox in it, but either way, we'll sort it out for the customer and then he'll have his car back. He's all right, because he's a friend, which is nice 
for us. It's less aggro when you sell a car to a friend, but it's also very annoying when you sell a car to a friend and something goes wrong, especially something that you've just had repaired. But like I say, it does happen. Right, I'm gonna end it here. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hit like if you like this video. Yeah, do me a favor, hit that bloody like button. I wanna see a couple of thousand likes in this video, so do make that effort to hit that bloody like button, because uh, 2,000 likes, that's not, that's not a much, that's not a big ask, is it? 2,000 likes, please. Uh, hit subscribe if you're new to my channel for a new video every Wednesday and Sunday at six o'clock. And if you're on Instagram, give me a follow on Instagram, at Calvin's Car Diary, and I'll see you on my next video, all right? In the next episode of Diary of Car Trader, you're going to find out what courtesy car Porsche gave me when I dropped the McCann off. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs>